I know I was manipulated by the game. I probably could have spent that money on something that I could have done with my family, like a holiday or something. But really, I was putting it into a game instead. At the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic, Kat McDonald was looking for something to do. Hey, Riley, did you want to paint? We were entering into lockdown and so I was actually just looking for something to occupy myself from home. And so once the kids went to sleep, I wanted to find something to play around with or something that would engage me. What she found was Legend of the Phoenix. I found it on an ad while playing another app and it was a really dodgy ad. It was just intrigued me. So I downloaded the app just to see what this game was about and then got engaged in the story. Legend of the Phoenix is a Chinese-made strategy game centred on a never-ending quest for love. Players take on the role of a young woman and complete quests to move up the social hierarchy. When I was playing the game in the earlier days, you know, I'd find myself in one of the top ranks or becoming like winning around. It just felt really good to be at the top of something because, you know, at that time in my life, I probably wasn't feeling like I was succeeding. I was getting a lot of negative kind of vibes and things like that. And COVID was a really sad time for a lot of people. So um, I went for, uh, it felt nice to actually be succeeding in something. <laughs> As Kat began to move up the rankings, the game urged her to purchase the in-game currency. This would allow her to buy new outfits for her character and boost her power. While her individual purchases were small, she lost track of her spending. I had thought that it was around the two and a half thousand dollar mark and it just took a little bit of digging because I wasn't sure how to work out an itemised account because on your bank account it just says Apple so it could be Stan or your Netflix subscriptions or whatever. So once I finally found out how to do the itemised Apple account, I sat down with a notepad and pen and wrote out every single transaction and added it up to four thousand dollars and that was just every time I kept adding it more I'm like it can't be that much it can't be that much but it was and it was really mind-blowing. These purchases of cats are called microtransactions and they're big business. Last year gamers around the world spent about 117 billion US dollars on microtransactions three quarters of all gaming revenue. Researchers say in-game currencies can be used to make players lose track of their spending. The intent behind an in-game currency is to change the psychological value of money that's being spent on the game. And game developers will sometimes use multiple currencies to disguise or mislead the player about how much money they actually need to spend in the long term until they're uh, already committed into the game. So then you just top up an extra dollar because it's only an extra dollar, right? And so then you top that up and then next thing you know, you've spent, what, $10 a day and that adds up quite a lot. <laughs> I think that we do need some kind of regulation um, on the amount of in-app purchases, whether it's an age restriction or... Um, an opt-out feature because it's just so easy even with the little kids apps that my boys play on they just can very quickly just press the button and buy it without even realizing they're spending real life money. Gaming is escapism and gaming is an experience that is supposed to be fun and engaging or scary if you're into horror and that sort of thing. It isn't something to make thousands of dollars, millions of dollars, billions of dollars off people who aren't really able to stop. 